It's space age. It should be fun. Space age, space age foam. That's the thing. The part that gets me the most is that we did this to ourselves. I wrote this down on the video idea board. Like, yeah, this is a great idea. Got one. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bee Fishing. We're here at the pond, and we're about to fish with what quite possibly could be the worst debate ever invented. Oh yes, sir. It's the Bill Dances Eel. The incredible Bill Dance's eel. And what does Bill Dance say about it? Here it is, the lure I've always wished for. We're gonna put that to the test. I'm pretty sure Bill Dance does not want his name associated with this bait anymore. This was like a late 80s bait, I believe. Um, not quite sure on the year, but again, eBay folks, if you wanna get these vintage baits, go to eBay, they're all over the place. These are brand new in the pack. Me and Chris are gonna go out here in the pond and see if we can just get something to, to nibble on them. That's our challenge today, Chris. Fish with one of the worst baits ever invented and see if we can catch a fish. We gotta find some stupid fish. So essentially it looks, uh, kind of looks like a tadpole-ish bait. I mean, it's it's an interesting one. So stay tuned. We're gonna represent an eel. It says it's an elver size, which is a young adolescent eel. Well, I know it's supposed to represent an eel, but I'm trying to, I'm, I'm looking at it going, okay, it kind of looks like a tadpole or, or a sperm, honestly. It kind of looks like a sperm. Anyway, guys, let's roll the intro. Let's get to it. All right, so the dance is eel. You know, you never hear Bill Dance talk about this one, even though it was made out of space age foam. Who would have thought? Hydrofoam, actually. I think I'm gonna fish it like a crankbait and uh, let the tail do some whipping in there. It's only got one set of treble hooks, so just one treble hook on it. You ready? I'm ready, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I mean, this isn't a 1v1. This is just a let's go catch fish. Let's catch some fish. Let's go catch some fish. I gotta see how this thing even looks in the water first. It really doesn't look bad, honestly. Bill Dance might have been on something. I don't know. This was heavily regarded as a major flop in the fishing industry. And it dives to around six feet is what it says. So you know what, we're just out here throwing these vintage baits again. We did the pocket fisherman. Now we've got this thing. I guess the next progression would be to fish this with the pocket fisherman and see what happens. Just kidding, that ain't gonna happen. So the, the interesting thing about this is you can fish it like a crankbait and we know crankbaits normally float, okay? This one don't, this one sinks. So that's the other issue. Like just then I had a little bit of a backlash. I'm gonna have crap all on this hook because this thing actually sinks. It's a slow sink but it actually sinks. But the other thing with, with doing these, like the worst rod combo challenge, the worst bait challenge, is if it's really that bad, you're not gonna catch any fish. And if you don't catch any fish on them, uh, what's the point of doing this video? I mean, it's not very interesting if I come out here and go, yeah, it's the worst, look, see, we didn't even catch anything. Maybe I'm just a bad fisherman, you don't know. Shout out to the guy who recommended this one. That, or He didn't really recommend it. He actually was the one who told me about it because he talks about these things all the time. Oh, Brandon. If y'all don't remember Brandon, he's from this video. I'm going to put it right here and let's play a clip from it. What's happening, fish fam? Yeah, fish fam. This is, this is the Bee Fishing Channel. It really makes me mad, Brent. Very dumb question, but the kill switch is in, right? I guess it's not a dumb question. No, it's not dumb. <laughs> you Brett Burks. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, Brett. Oh yeah, if y'all haven't seen that video, you need to go look at that video again. I should have put it up at the top a minute ago. Y'all need to re rewind, hit that link right there. That video is freaking hilarious. That was quite the day. Had a whole lot of fun that day. Brandon, we need to go fishing again. What are we doing? You got that new boat and you ain't hardly taking it out anymore. 
let me know in the comments right now. Let Brandon see it in the comments that y'all want me to fish with him again. Uh, we are kind of a comedic team at work, and I know we're going to be a comedic team on the water just like we were in that video. I mean, that's, that's YouTube gold right there. Plus, it's just fun. Oh, I had something nibble at it. Probably got the tail. That's another thing. How durable is this tail? Like, if we get a really feisty bass that grabs that tail, is it going to rip the tail off and then the bait's just useless? Let's just imagine for a second being a fish. You're in the pond. You're used to eating bluegill and worms. And we throw this thing at you. And you know those fish are like, what the hell? So as I'm out here, I'm starting to totally understand why this was a flop. Um, the profile of it is the problem. What it's trying to mimic an eel or what I kind of think it looks like, like a bullfrog, a uh, tadpole. The issue with it is in its, its tail. The tail gives it a lot of good action. The crankbait bill gives it a lot of good action. But let's, let's just look at this for a second, okay? Normal crankbaits put your treble hooks underneath and then put your treble hooks behind because that's where the fish is going to mostly attack. It's going to come up behind it and grab it or it's going to come up underneath it and grab it. With the only having treble hooks underneath right here, you're missing like a whole 75% of the bait. So the fish, if it's coming from behind, it's grabbing the tail and pulling. It's got to be right on. I mean, it's got to grab up top for you to hook anything because I've had one or two nibbles already and I know it's been on the tail. I can feel it because it, it grabs head shakes and then let's go. It's got to be on the tail. That's the flaw in this bait. It actually doesn't look terrible in the water, but that's the biggest flaw with this bait is that where the hooks are. The fish just aren't able to grab it. Have you at least been nibbled on? No. I got a couple nibbles back in the shade back there, but it was all tail. Which then brings up the point of what happens if they grab the tail and are able to rip it off? The bait's done. The bait's pretty much over with. I, it depends on how much it wobbles with half a tail. Yeah, I mean, but the tail's really what gives it that kick. But it's space age, it should be fine. Uh huh? It's space age, it should be fine. You're right, it's new space age technology on the space hydro foam. Age, space age foam. Yeah, I totally, I, I see why it's a flaw. I mean, it actually does look really good in the water. Like, it doesn't look bad, it's just, I think most of the body has no hook on it. Like it's only in the the very head, the top 25% of the bait. Well, it'd be a fairly sized big mouth fish to get it. Yeah, I mean to, to engulf that whole thing. That's what makes the bait so bad. It's not the action of it. I think the action of it's fine. I mean, out of the box it looked fine, but when you start fishing with it, you start noticing these little issues. Surely one of us will get on one fish here in a minute, though. One hour later. All right, so new strategy. Since it sinks, I'll be at a very slow sink. I'm going to let cast it, let this thing kind of fish it like a jig or a Texas rig or Carolina rig, and just slowly drag, give it a couple pops, really more like a jig. It's the only way I think the fish is going to have a chance to get those treble hooks. Got one! Caught one on the little eel. Hello. I think I caught that by our structure. Well, that's gonna do it for me. I think I may have had a nibble. I'm not I'm not sure. Could have just been a tree, it bouncing off of a tree limb. But I think I had a nibble. Because I kind of felt a head shake, but with a crankbait, sometimes you feel just the shake of the I don't know. To me, it really, I'm, I'm pretty convinced it was, I had at least a nibble probably on the tail. 
Chris was able to at least get one on this Mission Impossible bait. Um, definitely a lot of flaws in that bait. Just the profile of it to where the hooks are. Not really a whole lot you could do with it either. Bill Dance, I see what you're going for, or whoever got you to sign off on it. I see what you were going for. I think that in on paper, it probably made a whole lot of sense, but when you actually start fishing it, I mean, just the hook placement is not very good. You're gonna get fish a lot that come up here and bite the tail and never get to those hooks, not even close. You're gonna need the whole fish to come up and just munch the whole thing, which is why you kinda gotta fish it slow like a jig, because it gives them time to look at it. Chris literally just cast it at me. Those are treble hooks. That's not cool. You're talking to All-American. I knew right where I was throwing. Oh my gosh, him and this All-American stuff. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video on the worst bait, quite possibly the worst bait ever created. The old Dances Eel. I mean, it's just got so many issues. Let's just go over it real quick with you. Number one, it's got the crankbait bill, and that's just to give it the action to kick, but they don't really want you using it like that. The instructions actually tell you, wherever I put the instructions, that you almost want to fish it like a worm. Like you want it to hit the bottom, and you sort of jig, jig it up. Um, 40 foot cast, I mean, it tells you exactly how to fish it. The problem is, look where the hook is on the bait. I mean, it's all the way up here near the bill. Most of those fish, yes, they attack from the bottom, and they also attack from the back. If they attack from the back, they're gonna have to inhale the whole thing to get to the hooks. Um, if you jig it, you have a better chance um, just from where the hooks are. Maybe they'll grab the, the meat of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the biggest problem with this bait is I, I believe it actually will get bit, but they'll never make it to the hooks. Um, also, it gets hung up on like darn near everything. So if you were coming to this video expecting us to just absolutely catch a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of fish, uh, it wasn't gonna happen. We were fishing with one of the worst baits ever. So hopefully we didn't let you down there. Chris, what do you think of the dance is ill? It looks pretty, but you put lipstick on a pig, still a pig. It's actually a really good analogy. And then, seriously, when we put it first put it in the water, I was like, oh, no problem. The thing looks great. It swims really good. It looks really, really good, but it fishes terribly. Um, just because it looks good doesn't mean it's going to catch fish. It's all about hook placement. And uh, I think that was its biggest problem is hook placement on the thing. Um, great idea on paper, not so much in execution. I think that's why the thing failed miserably. Chris did actually catch one on it, though. He tricked one. He got one. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, if you do, hit the like button. Leave me a comment below on stuff you want to see us do in the future. Uh, any other baits? Like I said, I know y'all y'all mentioned um, some of those baits. The, the guy who created the banjo minnow, I can't remember what it's called now. It kind of looks like a jig and a tube mix. It's real weird. Uh, let me know in the comments what that one was, and we'll see if we can't get a hold of that one. Maybe make some magic happen with it. Uh, but until next time, hit the subscribe button, hit those ding-dong notifications, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Later. Uh -huh.